Hey friends, as we gather and worship this day, I want to remind you, he is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. This is the good news that has changed the world, it changes our life, and we're going to gather to worship this God who shows up still today. And so we thank you for joining us together, and we pray for God's Holy Spirit to be with you, to bless you in your faith, to bless you in your life, in whatever situation that you have. To know that God is with you. And so we rejoice because Jesus is with you. He is our Lord and Savior. So come, let us worship. We now make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Alleluia. Alleluia. As we come into God's presence, we have the opportunity to confess our sins, and we do so now. Lord, you forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. So let us then confess our sins to our gracious God. Almighty God, in humility and with repentant hearts, we, can, we come before you with regret and admit and confess our sinfulness. We have not lived up to our calling as your peaceable people. We have not done the good you demand and have not been the people you would, want us to, you would have us to be. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins in thought, word, and deed. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, have mercy on us, merciful Father. Forgive us all that needs your forgiving grace. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct us to serve you faithfully all the days through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the good news is that God has promised his merciful forgiveness to those who repent of their sin and turn to him in confession. He will revive them and speak peace to his people and so in his stead and by his command, I announce that he forgives all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue with a song.
Our first reading for this second Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them, but a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos, rose up claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone, For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they they left the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved with various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, that your faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you've not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. 
This is God's promise to you and me. And our Holy Gospel is a reading from John chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again. And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed? Because you have seen me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Nobody wants to believe something only to be let down. Nobody wants to get their hopes up only to be disappointed. And nobody wants to blindly believe something only to find out they're going to be wrong later. At some point, at some level, you hold back in order to protect yourself from disappointment. Think about it. This whole coronavirus situation, everything seems to be fluid. And what I mean by that is this. The government, the doctors, the experts, they haven't come out and said, this is the day where everything's going to be back to normal. They haven't come and give us an absolute date where they say, you can plan on this day, it's this day that everything will be back to how it was. They haven't done that. Sure, they've given us curves, they've given us graphs, they've given us charts to interpret for ourselves, but they've been very careful about how they've worded things. And I think one reason they've done that is they they don't want to pick a date and then a few weeks later find out they're wrong. They don't want to give America and the world false hope that only leads to disappointment. I think this is true for every situation we face in life, right? Nobody wants to believe something only to find out that they're wrong. And so as a a human being, as protection from disappointment, we look for proof. And when we find that proof, we can let go of our reservations. We can believe something blindly because we've seen it for ourselves. I'm sure many of you have heard the phrase, seeing is believing. And what that phrase really means is if you can see it with your own eyes, it becomes much more real than just relying on somebody else's word. If you can see it with your own eyes, you you don't have to trust other people, but you can simply trust what you saw. And if you can see it with your own eyes, that gives you the proof you need to believe something no matter how crazy it is. And I think you and me, whether we want to admit it or not, I think a lot of times we live by this mantra. 
If we can see it, we can believe it. If we can see it, we can let go of our reservations and we can believe something blindly. Well, right now, I'm going to jump into the mind of one of the disciples on that first Easter, and I'm going to experience what they might have been experiencing. And I invite you to join me. Well, we were all shocked at how fast everything had happened. One minute, we were eating in the upper room with Jesus, and the next minute, we heard from our friend Peter that Jesus had been arrested And before we knew it, we were all standing off in the distance, watching Jesus hang on that cross in pain. And when Jesus was hanging there in pain, the the sky turned dark. and, And Jesus cried out with a loud voice. And just like that, it all was over. The three years that we had spent with this man, it it all came to a screeching halt that day. Because Jesus, he, he he died. On the cross, our leader, our friend, a man who had led us on so many crazy journeys, he died. And he he was placed into a tomb sealed with a stone, and there were guards standing there guarding it. And Mary and her friends, they had made plans to go take care of Jesus' body on that Sunday morning. And they had invited us to go with them. But none of us could bear to do that because we were still grieving the loss of a friend. We were still struggling. We were still wrestling with what had just happened. We're trying to wrap our heads around it. And Mary and her friends, they they came back to the place that we were staying, and they were so excited. They wanted to share some joyous news with us. But they were so excited, we couldn't understand what they were saying. So Peter and John, they finally got them to calm down, and then we could hear the message that they wanted to tell us. And Mary and her friends said this. They said that the stone had been rolled away from Jesus' tomb. They said the guards were laying there like they were dead. And they said they saw an angel. And the angel told them that Jesus had risen from the dead, that Jesus is no longer here. They told, the angel told them that Jesus was alive. And when we first heard this, the, the room was filled with unbelief. But Mary and her friends, they kept going on and on, insisting and telling us that it was true. And I'd say after they were done, about 50% of the disciples believed them, and 50% didn't. But we all had the unified reaction that Peter did. Peter immediately said to the woman, show me. I want to see it with my own eyes. And all of us, just like Peter, we wanted to see this to make sure it was real. We didn't get, want to get our hopes up for nothing. We, we didn't want to get our hopes up only to be disappointed a little bit later on. We wanted to see it for ourselves. We wanted to see this truth. So we sent Peter to investigate the scene for us. Well, on that same day, a little bit later, that, that same day where the woman came and delivered this joyous news that Jesus was alive and the tomb was empty, We were all gathered in the upper room together, wrestling over this new information that we had discovered. All of us were there. Well, all except our friend Thomas. You see, Thomas, he was really struggling with this news that Jesus had died. He he was grieving the loss of a friend. And he told us that he needed some alone time, that he had to go off by himself. But he said he'd be back soon. But when Thomas was gone, the most amazing thing happened. Jesus showed up in our presence. Jesus appeared before our own eyes. And we touched him to make sure that he was real. He he showed us his pierced hands and his pierced side. He came and reassured us that what what we heard from the women was true. Jesus, he, he knew we were struggling with this new information. He knew that We were struggling with the unnaturalness of this situation because it is not normal to see your friend raised from the dead. So he came to give us sight, to to reassure us that what Mary and her friends said was true. And Jesus, he came and appeared before us. He interacted with us so that we could believe the truth that he had defeated death, that he had risen from the dead. 
My friends, it was amazing. But unfortunately, he had to leave us that day. And our friend Thomas, he arrived about an hour after Jesus left. And, and as soon as Thomas got into the room, we, we all bombarded him. We all wanted to share this great, joyous message that we had just experienced. That Jesus had been raised from the dead. And we all shared our own testimonies to Thomas of what had happened just as he was gone. And Peter and John, they, they tried to convince him as well. But no matter how hard we tried, Thomas, he wouldn't believe. Our friend Thomas told us that he, he would never believe until he himself could see the pierced hands of Jesus. Until he could see the pierced side of our friend and of our leader. Thomas He probably thought we were crazy. He probably thought we were hallucinating. Maybe he thought that we lost it. And I'm sure to Thomas, we sounded just like Mary and her friends who came and delivered this joyous news to us, that the tomb was empty, that Jesus had risen from the dead. And I felt bad for Thomas. Because Thomas was going through everything. He was going through the same thing that all of us went through. He was grieving the loss of a close friend. And Thomas, he knew that it wasn't normal to see your friend raised from the dead just three days later. He, just like the rest of us, had saw Jesus hanging there on that cross in pain. He, he saw it with his own eyes. And Thomas, unfortunately, he didn't get to experience Jesus like the rest of us did in that room because he was gone all by himself. I really did feel bad for Thomas. And I realized that Thomas wouldn't be able to believe us until he could see it with his own eyes. He wouldn't be able to believe our testimony and our witness that Jesus really was alive. So that night, I I prayed to God that Jesus would show up again, that Thomas could see him with his own eyes, that he could see the wounds on his hands and his side. Well, eight days later, God had answered my prayers. Jesus showed up in our presence again, but this time Thomas was there. Jesus, he gave Thomas exactly what he asked for. Jesus showed him his pierced hands and his wounded side. And my friends, you should have seen the joy on Thomas' face. The joy was radiating off his face. He was so excited to see his friend who he thought was dead. And he gave Jesus a big hug. And Thomas, he fell to his knees and he said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. And I think Thomas was a little embarrassed that he didn't believe us. He didn't believe our testimony that Jesus was alive. And I'm thankful that Jesus didn't single me out like he did for Thomas. But Jesus, he came. And he gave Thomas the proof that he needed. He gave Thomas the opportunity to interact with him, to to ask him questions. He gave Thomas the opportunity to touch his pierced hands and his pierced side. Jesus, he came and gave Thomas the sight he needed because he wanted Thomas to believe the truth, that he had conquered death, that he was risen from the dead. Jesus gave Thomas exactly What he asked for. Jesus gave Thomas the proof that he needed to believe this miraculous thing that it just had happened. This is what I think the disciples went through that first Easter, and this is what I think they experienced. I think Thomas experienced something similar to this as well. But for you and for me today, Jesus has shown up for us too. We may not have the opportunity to interact with the risen Lord like Thomas and the disciples did in our text, but we have been given God's word. And in God's word, Christ shows up. Christ shows us his pierced hands and his wounded side. He he shows us who he really is. In Christ's word, in God's word, we find out what Christ does for us on the cross and why he did it. Why he went through all that pain to die and rise again three days later. We find all of that out 
and God's word. He did it for you and for me so that we could have eternal life with God forever, so that we could have forgiveness in God's name. In Christ, in God's word, Christ shows himself. In our gospel text today from John chapter 20, Jesus says, or John says, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. God's word, it allows us to confess and it creates faith in us so that we can echo the same words as Thomas, that we can get on our hands and our knees and we can pray to God and we can pray to Jesus saying, my Lord, my God, we can confess Jesus is the Lord of all. And because of God's word, we're called blessed by Jesus. In our gospel text today, Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet still believed. God's word, it's, it's a vehicle. It's an instrument. It's a tool that God uses to create faith in us and give us faith in him. It's a tool that God uses to show his true self, to show his risen self to us so that we may believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So we don't need sight like Thomas. We don't need to touch and interact with Jesus like the disciples did in our text. We don't need to see it to believe it because Christ has shown up in his word. He has shown up for us today. There are some people out in the world who who want Jesus to show up so they can see Jesus with their own eyes just like Thomas in our text. Some people say to Jesus, Jesus, do this or do that, and then I'll know you are who they say you are. Or some people might say to Jesus, Jesus, give me that job, and I'll know you're the real deal. Or some people today say, Jesus, end this coronavirus, and I'll know you have the, plow- the power that you claim you have. Well, the problem with all these statements is that they're really just echoing what Thomas says in our text. Remember what Thomas said. Thomas said, I'll I'll never believe unless I get to touch your hands, unless I get to see your side. Thomas says, I'll never believe it until I get to see it. I think some of us act this way sometimes too, don't we? Some of us put conditions on God. God, God, do this and then I'll believe you. God, answer my prayer this way and then I'll put my full faith in you. I think sometimes in our Christian walk, we we do this all the time. We put conditions on God. We have him do stuff for us and then we'll believe in him. But my friends, Christ has showed up. He has shown us his true self in God's word. He's shown us his risen self. He's shown us how much he loves you and how much he's forgiven you, how much his mercy for you means to him. He he went to the cross for you and for me so that you could have life in his name, so that you could have eternal life with God in heaven forever. And as St. Paul says, we walk by faith, not by sight. So even when it looks bad out there, even when it looks like Christ is nowhere to be found, I encourage you to cling to the promises that you have in God's word from Jesus. Promises like, surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Promises like, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Promises like, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Cling to the promises of Jesus found in God's word and cling to the hope that gives you. Because Christ has shown up. He has shown himself to you. And because of Christ's word, because of God's word, you are called blessed by Jesus.
My friends, Christ, he has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And may the grace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, we certainly thank Vicar Sean for that message about Jesus showing up. And he's showing up in each one of our homes every day. He is with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. We thank God for his promises, that he keeps his promises. And we certainly continue to rejoice in the new life that he gives to us. We're also thankful for any opportunity that we have to, commit, uh, to connect with our community. So we thank you that you've been viewing this. Uh, at this time in our service, when we finish with the message, it's always our time to, to now enter into prayer. But before we do that, we have a time of receiving the offerings. Of course, not gathering together, things are a bit different, but we want to again thank everybody who is taking the opportunity to go to our website for that online giving or to make the effort of coming by to, to, to drop off offerings. A lot of people have also been mailing them in. So thank you for your support as we are able to continue this mission. More than that, uh, to prepare us uh, to continue to meet the needs of our community uh, in the months to come. So God be praised for your gifts and your supports. We now continue with the profession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. And we join our hearts in a time of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the blessings that you give to us to be your people, to be the body of Christ. And each one of us has a part of this family. And Lord, you have a witness and a mission and a ministry for us together but also especially now in our own homes, in our own workplaces. We pray, Lord, that, that we may be a blessing to others, to be a light shining, the hope that is within us, the peace that we have from you, God, the love that we have, that people may know you. We ask, Lord, that you, you place a hunger in people's hearts to want to know of this hope that we have that comes through the gospel, this good news. And we pray, Jesus, your special blessing upon all in our community or who are suffering right now. We remember in our prayers those who are sick with any kind of illness. We give thanks, Lord, for, for those who are caring for others, our first responders, our hospital personnel, doctors and nurses. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon police and fire department and also our military. We thank you, Lord, for their service. We ask your protection upon them. We remember in our prayers also the youth of our community. And from our own congregation this week, we especially want to lift up our fifth and sixth graders, our Club 56. We thank you, Lord, that, that you are at work in the life of young people and in this influential time of their life. Let them realize that even in the midst of of terrible things going on around the world, things that are so unsure and uncertain, that, Lord Jesus, you are there to bless them, to help them, to carry us all in this time. And so we pray that you increase our faith in you, that our trust will be, Lord, in your power and strength. We ask, Lord, also your blessing upon those who serve you as missionaries and and we especially lift up Shawan and Krista Trump serving you in Africa. Thank you, Lord, also for the ministry that you've given to Pastor Zhang Yang at Trinity Mong Lutheran Church. We pray, Jesus, that 
you will be with our entire community, our state, our nation, and the world, that, Lord God, people will turn to you, but also, Lord, you and your grace and your mercy and your power will help us as we turn in a time of need that you, Lord, will hinder the progress of this virus that has affected so many lives, that you, Lord, will, as soon as is safe and as possible, allow people to, to continue to, to work and continue to gather. And we pray, Lord, that you will grant us your safety. Jesus, in the midst of all that's going on, we also are able to rejoice that you are working in people's lives, especially the, the great blessing of, of bringing people together in marriage. And we ask, Lord, your special blessing upon Brittany Zier and Cody Wesson as they are joined in marriage on Saturday. On that same day, Lord, we rejoice with the, the joining together of Ryan Ballman and Brandy Anderson. We pray, Lord, for these two young couples that you will... Um, provide your love uh, throughout their lives, your protection, and that, Lord, even though this is a, a different time to, to begin a life together, that it will be one that is filled with joy for all involved. Jesus, in your mercy and grace, we pray for healing for these, our friends, our neighbors, our church members who need your gift of healing. We lift up Lori Kirkendall, Lee Maynard, Kevin Huffman, Tammy Gilbert, Steve Sigman, Andrea Little, Brittany Watson, Charles Bailey, Caitlin Reese, Carol Towery, Mary Alice Klein, Anne Graham, Shelba Cavan, Joyce Poovey, Kim Rundle, Mike Gentle, Felicia Holler, Mike Miller, Kathy Hefner, Diane Moose, Bill Beard, Betty Flowers, Charlie LaFon, Roger D. Drum, Shirley Killian, Kay Holler, Yvonne M. McKenzie Roberts, and Tina Woody. Lord, each one is known by you. You know their needs, you know their cares. We pray that this very hour, that you will reassure them, that your power will be upon them to bring healing to them, and that you will bless them in every way, in body, mind, and in spirit. Lord God, we rejoice also in being the family of faith. And so we ask your special blessing upon Kenneth Maynor, Mike and Aaron Moreau and family, Hazel Murray, Ruby Allman, Dusty and Dana Reed and family. Lord, in your mercy, let them be aware that you are with them, how much you love them, their identity as part of your family, Lord. We pray that that gives them peace. We ask, Lord, that you will pour out your love upon all for whom we pray, upon all in our community. We commend, commend all these prayers into your hands, Lord. We trust in your mercy. We pray it in your name. And we are most privileged to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.
people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the mighty King, worthy is the Lamb, worthy of the praise, worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the mighty King, worthy is the Lamb, worthy of the praise, worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy